بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وبعد إن شاء الله today will be our final sitting on the topic of backbiting and from tomorrow بإذن الله تعالى as all of you know that we will start the odd nights of the last ten nights and so the most befitting topic is none other than the topic of seeking Laylatul Qadr, what is Laylatul Qadr, and the various questions that pertain to the concept of Laylatul Qadr. So that's what we will begin tomorrow. But for today, we will finish backbiting. And our final topic is how to do tawbah, how to seek forgiveness, how to t- turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it. And like I mentioned before, we're supposed to di- discuss this topic from time to time so that in order for us to see an effect or change in the way that we have conversations, in order for us to become better Muslims, to strengthen our brotherhood and sisterhood, and allow us to utilize our time on ourselves and our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not exposing, backbiting, slandering our fellow Muslims and human beings. And this is why this topic needs constant revision. But our final topic, like I said, is how to do tawbah from it. When I backbited so much, how do I absolve this major sin? Like Imam Al-Qurtubi and Imam al nawi said, how do I absolve this major sin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imam al nawawi and Imam Al-Ghazali and many of the different scholars, they mention the same exact conditions. And they say that there are four conditions in, for a person that he must complete in order to become forgiven for backbiting. Three of these conditions are the same exact conditions that a person has to do when he does a sin or transgression against the rights of Allah. Meaning you disobey Allah but it doesn't affect anybody else. Those are three conditions. Then the fourth condition is an additional condition when you break the rights of humanity or even the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that what are the first three conditions? The first three conditions, number one, is leaving the sin itself, meaning leaving backbiting. Number two is regretting it. And this regret is such a regret that it's not regret for a day. It's not regret for two days. It's regret till the very last breath that you breathe, that I hurt my brother or my sister, or I disobeyed Allah by backbiting. This is what regret actually is. And the third thing is having firm conviction, azm in the heart, that you're not going to go back to backbiting. So number one is leaving the sin. Number two is regretting the sin. And number three is having firm conviction in the heart. This pertains to all sins and all bad deeds and all major sins. But now there's an additional condition. And that is that if you take a right or you harm somebody else or you backbite somebody else, if it's a physical thing, you return it. For example, you steal somebody's money, you return it back to them. If you backbite them, then you go and you tell them and you make things right. You go and you tell them and make things right. And now you might wonder, what is the proof for all of this? Who told me that I have to go tell somebody else that I have to backbite? The proof is in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, in which Rasulullah wasallam he said, مَنْ كَانَتْ لَهُ مَظْلَمَةً لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ عِرْضِهِ أَوْ شَيْءٍ Whosoever has a grievance or an oppression that they've done to somebody else, meaning backbiting, مِنْ عِرْضِهِ Meaning something that you've taken away from their honor by backbiting them. Oh shape. Or if you take something else from them. For example, money or property or whatever it is. If you do anything wrong to somebody else, فَلْيَتَحَلَّلْهُ مِنْهُ الْيَوْمِ Then go to that person, apologize today, and get rid of the mistake today. Today. And then the Prophet ﷺ says something very interesting. He says, قَبْلَ أَنْ لَا يَكُونَ دِينَارٌ وَلَا دِرْهَمٌ before there comes a day in which there's no dinar or dirham, meaning there's no gold, there's no silver, there's no money. Now this is interesting because generally you might wonder, why didn't the Prophet ﷺ say, قَبْلَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Why didn't the Prophet ﷺ say, make sure that you make things right before the day of judgment? Why does he say, make sure you make things right before there's no gold and silver, before there's no money? Because sometimes if you wrong somebody, 
and they don't want to forgive you, then you should give them money. You should give them money so that they can let you go. Why should you do that? Because the Prophet Sallallahu tells us, he says, إِن كَانَ لَهُ عَمَلٌ أُخِذَ مِنْهُ بِقَدْرِ مَظْلَمَتِهِ That if you have any good deeds, that person, if he doesn't forgive you, he'll take away your good deeds from you. But if you pay them off, then perhaps that paying off might become a reason that they forgive you in this world and they don't take your good deeds. Why? Because the good deeds of the next life are far valuable than any, than any gold or silver that you possess in your pocket today. But obviously the person forgiving you shouldn't ask you for money, they should just forgive you. But the Rasulullah is trying to teach us something, that you seek people's forgiveness. And if you don't have good needs, وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ حَسَنَاتِ If you don't have any good deeds, أُخِذَ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ صَاحِبِهِ فَهُمِلَ عَلَيْهِ That your bad deeds will, will, your bad deeds will be your bad deeds. But his bad deeds, the person that you backbited, they'll be taken from him and they'll be put on top of you. So meaning your good deeds are being taken away and your bad deeds are becoming more. Now, this hadith, if you're listening to it and you don't feel anything and it makes you laugh and it's different things like that, this should scare you. Because on the day of judgment, there's going to be people that will come. They're going to pray the whole month of Ramadan. They're going to do all of this hard work. They're going to wake up for Fajr. All of you know how hard it is to wake up for Fajr. I know. I know how hard it is. Waking up for Fajr, making wudu in the cold water, all of it is gone. All of your sacrifices become zero. All because you chose to give somebody else your good deeds and to take their bad deeds, right? So imagine 20 years of doing ibadah and in two months you get rid of, well, rid of all of it. All of it. It could go away in a flash. And this is why Al-Hasan al-Basri, a man came to him and he said that, بَلَغَنِي أَنَّكَ اِغْتَبْتَنِي That it reached me that you backbited me, O Hasan, or, or Al-Hasan. And he said, why would I backbite you? Your level or your station isn't even enough for me to backbite you. Right? He's trying to say that I'm not willing to let go of my good deeds. I'm not willing to pass out or distribute my good deeds to you and backbite you. And then a man, one time he backbited Al-Hasan al-Basri. And Al-Hasan al-Basri, he prepared a plate of dates and he gifted it to that person. And he said to that person, I'm not able to reward you for the backbiting that you did because these dates don't equal the amount of good deeds that you gave me. Right? This is how dangerous this affair is. Imam Ahmad used to say that if I were to backbite anybody, I'd backbite my mother. Why? Because my mother would get my good deeds. But today we backbite our enemies, people that we don't even like, and we give them our good deeds. This is the danger of this thing. So we shouldn't be backbiting at all. And the last thing that I want to mention is that Imam al nawawi he, he asks a question and he says that, do I have to tell the person what I said? The first position is no. This is the first position of the Shafi'i scholars that no. The second position is yes. And this is the dominant position. Because for example, if you take somebody's money and you have to return it back to them because you stole it, you have to give them the exact amount back. In the same exact way, if you backbite somebody and you hurt them in their honor, then you have to tell them exactly what you said. But there's a stipulation that if you tell them if it causes a greater harm or greater facade or greater corruption on earth, then you can refrain and you can say, Oh brother, I backbited you. Oh you sister, I backbited you. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because it will cause more problems between us. And if he accepts that or she accepts that, then you're free. But if they don't accept it, then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. And the last thing that I'm going to mention is that what if the person has already passed away? What if it's somebody in their grave that you backbited? The scholars, they say that if it's somebody that you backbited in the grave, somebody who's already passed away, you should make istighfar on his behalf. You should give sadaqah on that person's behalf. And you should always mention that person in gatherings in a good sense if you said something bad about them. And ultimately this topic is very difficult because it means that we lose our good deeds, it means that somebody else gets our good deeds, and it means we get their bad deeds. So it's something that we should really be cognizant of, especially in the month of Ramadan when we're all collecting good deeds, especially in the last 10 days. So let's all forgive one another actively right at this moment, make the intention that I forgive everybody in this room. Start a new fresh page with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going into the last 10 days of Ramadan. 
and a new fresh page with your brothers and your sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.